Y'all, hostage negotiations are underway. These goofy goats are now six days overdue. Now, five days is considered normal. We are not normal anymore and I'm getting impatient. And it sounds like Autumn is impatient for me to come in and let her out. Good morning, Autumn. Good morning. Are you ready to get out? Are you impatient? You hear mommy talking outside the barn and you just start Mwah. Let's get you out, girlfriend. She has a big shift pen that we've made for her that she knows how to open the door on now. So we had to park that trailer in front. There you go. Now you can come out and play. You just want your morning scratches, don't you? You just love your mama's morning scratches. She's a happy girl. She's a happy girl. Oh yeah. Is that the spot? Fancy. This hostage situation needs to be given up. You have an otter. You're past your due date. Why are your ligaments still tight? I am going to resort to bribery. Fancy. Fancy girl, pay attention. Hey, I can't bribe you. Let the other goats see it first. No, kitty sees it. No. We all know Kitty loves the banana peels. Now I'm never gonna get away. What what are you doing, Daisy? <laughs> Alright, Daisy, I'm gonna I'm gonna bribe you. Give up the hostages. No, that's not for you, Hearts. Hearts is my other banana peel lover besides Kitty. Look at Kitty and Hearts fighting. No, I'm trying to give it to Daisy! Ah I can't believe. They're still pregnant. And they won't even accept my bribes. I mean, that's pretty good bribery right there, right? That's pretty good bribery. But no, all the other goats would have taken it. Fancy, can you tell us, when are you gonna have your baby? And this girl looks like she's sunken in, like she's dropped, but no baby. Goodness, Rosemary, you're big. Are you gonna have triplets? Rosemary is doing a couple of weeks too. I just threw the banana peels at them and they didn't want them. They let them fall to the ground. I'm like, come on. Maybe it's a pregnancy thing. Maybe they don't like banana peels while they're pregnant. I don't know. <sighs> so the goat gestation is 150 days. But of course they say 145 to 155 is normal. We are at 156 today. My concern is, is if they go too far overdue, that the kids will get too big and they'll have a difficult delivery. There are some people who do go to the vet and get a drug called Lutalese or Lute that will induce labor um, in situations like this, but I'm just not there. I, when my doctor threatened to induce me, it really did not sit well with me. I don't like the idea of it at all. And I feel like if I can let them go naturally, that'd probably be the best bet because mother nature is funny and who knows what the reason is why they're holding on to these babies longer than usual. Or a lizard because if it's a lizard I'm gonna have to save it from you you know I don't like you playing with lizards like they're sticks yeah they're mommy's friends it looks like it's a lizard oh good I distracted her long enough so that the lizard can escape 
Go little lizard, escape. Go little skink. Go on buddy. Go on buddy. Oh, is it hurt? Come on little guy. He's probably just scared. Let's see if I can pick him up and move him out of her way. It's hard to pick him up. Well, maybe I distracted her enough. I know you're just being a kitty. You don't, you don't mean to be a mean kitty. You're just being a kitty. Oh, you just laid down on the skink. Skink hiding under the kitty is probably, well, maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> the skink is hiding under the kitty. Silly. Silly, silly kitty. Silly, silly lizard. Well, I was very lucky to have my daughter's friend John come and help me again. This kid is amazing. He was able to get these two raised beds completely formed and ready for planting. And I could not be happier. He also was able to move the mulch to our food forest area. So our food forest is coming along quite nicely. We've got blueberries, uh, a little peach tree that was coming up just barely from some of the stem that survived the winter. Blueberry. Fig. We've got another blueberry. Another fig. Blueberry. Oh, I almost fell. A pear. A little baby blackberry. And a big blackberry. Those are both thornless blackberries. And this one's going to have some flowers and that means we're gonna have some fruit which is super exciting I wonder what that pollinator is it looks familiar but I don't know his name if anybody knows leave it in the comments down below he's kind of cool looking he is very cool looking actually I like him oh, and he's gone so yeah we got fruit and flowers that are gonna form on this one and then we have the apple tree which has multiple varieties of apples on each branch because it's uh, grafted, different varieties. And then another blueberry and a fig and a blueberry. And this right here is a rhubarb. And I'm super, super excited about this. It looks like it's growing really well. It was a very healthy looking root, so I'm super stoked to get this baby healthy and hopefully be able to harvest after next year. The asparagus season has come and gone and now the fronds are being left to bloom and provide photosynthesis. It's really important that you leave any asparagus that gets too big because that's how the photosynthesis increases the health of the roots so that next year's crop will be good. So I'm super excited to have enjoyed lots of wonderful asparagus this year and now get to watch them grow strong throughout the summer for next year's crop. This is cool over here. Ryan used the blowtorch weeder. I really really wanted to record him doing this but I wasn't feeling well and he just needed to get the work done so he got it done all right and this really worked. This was all Creeping Charlie so I think he's figured out how to use it better so that we'll now be able to take care of the Creeping Charlie in the winter that's on the asparagus beds. We can't do anything about it now because we don't want to harm them. All of this beautiful stuff here is Solidago, otherwise known as Goldenrod. It is medicinal, it can be used in teas, it has lovely flower for medicine, everything about it I just love. It is a little bit invasive, so I have been pulling it out from the asparagus bed. Still got a section left to do. I pulled it all out of this one, but I've got a section there. And there's some other weeds here and there besides the Creeping Charlie that acts as a blanket. Um, we got a poke weed and some blackberry that have come in, but for the most part, it's nothing that's going to be too hard to take care of. Once winter comes, we can get rid of the large weeds and then take care of this Creeping Charlie once the asparagus dies back. Good news is, is our cold hardy crops are doing okay, even though I got them kind of planted late. 
Um, at the end here, we have a nice summer crop of lamb's quarters. This, these lamb quarters came from seed that I got from the Homestead of America seed swap that we hosted. And these came from Kathleen at Mama Grows. And I'm super excited. A lot of people would probably not plant lamb's quarters in their garden, but I am different than most people. And they are special to me. And then we've got a variety of cabbages and broccolis and cauliflower i mean yeah cauliflower i think those are cauliflower the tags are down there but um yeah so then the first planting of broccoli i did is doing amazing no flower heads but if worse comes to worse we will um oh look the wasp is doing its job this is why we don't kill wasp people you see what it's got it's a caterpillar that it harvested off of my plants. This is why I don't use on my cabbage and broccoli for the caterpillars because the wasp would be affected by it too. And this wasp is a beneficial insect because it's eating that caterpillar. And look, there's more wasp foraging, looking for more caterpillars to eat. This is why DE is not safe to use in the garden because of reasons like this. The DE would kill the wasp as well as the caterpillar. And we definitely don't want to kill the wasp if they're coming to eat the caterpillar. Another friendly creature that comes to eat the caterpillar is our toads. We have a lot of them. You see them hopping away. Bye bye Mr. Toad! Liam loves them. The strawberries are still putting out lots and lots of blooms new berries and ripe berries constantly and we are just thrilled with how productive they've been well my garden may still be full of weeds and still not planted it still brings me so much joy from the things that we worked on last fall and i know that we'll get to it and mother's day weekend is approaching and, and that's always a time that i get to bribe people to plant for me these artichoke are looking so good. They are probably the next thing I'm going to plant in the food forest. Super excited about that. Of course, they're not as big as my friend Jen at the Sunshine Farms artichoke yet, but they will catch up and all of these plants will be planted soon. The bees are doing great. They are thriving really, really well in this heavy nectar flow that we're in. And we had to add another box on top for them to build out because they had built out the bottom two boxes completely. So this is a happy, happy sight for my homestead heart. I hope you all have enjoyed this homestead update. And we'll see you next time on Whole Spurts.